Hey guys, what is going on? Chris here from Shughead Gaming, and here is my full review of the complete Nintendo Labo VR kit. Coming up, I will be breaking down what contraptions there are to build, the building process, and the final durability of each. Then, of course, we will dig into all the major games, mini games, and everything hiding in between. I will be looking at age appeal, game depth, VR functionality, gameplay, graphics, and of course, the most important thing, fun factor. Is Nintendo's jump into modern VR just a gimmick, or is it a solid gateway into the world of VR? Let's find out. As always guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you'd like to see more VR coverage from me, please consider subscribing, and for video updates, hit that bell icon. First off, when looking at your purchase options for Nintendo Labo VR, you have a few. The best bang for your buck, of course, is the complete kit featuring the physical game and all 8 cardboard contraptions, of which include the pinwheel, snorkel, and wind pedal, along with the larger contraptions of the camera, elephant, bird, blaster, and of course, the VR goggles themselves. And this retails for $80 US. If instead you choose to just dip your toe into the Nintendo VR waters, the other purchase options break down as follows. The starter kit is a mandatory purchase, however, as it also contains the VR goggles and the physical game. Unfortunately, from what I can tell, the complete kit is the only way to currently get your hands on the pinwheel and snorkel. Jumping into the build part of the complete Labo VR kit, I was met with layers and layers of cardboard sheets, two sheets of non-decorative stickers, a bag of plastic fasteners, and another bag of elastic bands. First step was booting up the game cartridge itself and going to the make section. It is here you will find amazingly thorough and easy to follow video instructions on how to make each contraption. These videos can be rewound, fast forwarded, paused, and even zoomed in and spun around, making for one of the best build instructions I've ever seen. Build time will however vary greatly on all the contraptions depending on what order you build them in, for as my experience grew, I found myself fast forwarding through many of the fold here demonstrations and actually finished the 3 hour blaster build in about 90 minutes. The overall build difficulty of all the contraptions does vary, but the real important factor is patience and proper folding. I would recommend to any parent looking to pick this up to build it with your kids, for if you decide to leave this with small hands and excited minds, you may as well give them a shoebox to fold and then just burn $80. Durability also varies between contraptions, and I will go into that more as we jump into specific games. But yeah, it's still cardboard, and as a whole, I'm not sure how long it will hold up to drops, crushes, or dampness. Many of the contraptions have elastic bands under tension to provide spring-type action, so structural integrity is key to most of the bigger contraptions actually working. In fact, I would go as far as to suggest adult supervision when handing these over to young kids and drunk friends. With that, let's take a look at the VR goggles themselves. One of the simpler builds this contraption comes off as a much better constructed version of Google Cardboard. The level of building difficulty here was on the moderate side of things with few moving parts. Essentially, it's just a cardboard box with lenses, but it works, and for cardboard, felt pretty durable. The switch slides into this easily, and while it does feel pretty secure, there's also a safety cover you can slide over to make sure it doesn't fall out. Spec-wise, the Switch's 720p screen split between two eyes is definitely on the lower side of things, with a lower pixel count than even the Daydream or Gear VR options. That being said, it handles the Nintendo style of visuals well enough, and we'll get into that further as we look at each game. Also worth mentioning is that the headset is also limited to detecting the position you are standing or sitting in. More advanced VR headsets can follow your head's position, known as 3 degrees of freedom, or your entire body position, known as 6 degrees of freedom. The Switch only has internal motion sensors, so you won't be looking in to get up close to objects in-game, or physically moving around a virtual space. And with that, let's take a look at the camera contraption and its two primary games of Ocean Camera and House Camera. Building of the camera has an estimated build time of 30 to 60 minutes and was actually one of the more interesting builds. A lot of ingenuity went into the lens portion, for when completed it, it has a twist lock for zooming in, complete with a ratcheting click sound for added immersion. I'm not sure how long this function will hold up under continual use, but it was cool nonetheless. The Ocean Camera game itself has you sightseeing underwater and taking pictures of the aquatic life swimming around. Very reminiscent of the PSVR World's Ocean Descent game, your experience here has you sinking to the bottom, revealing different fish as you continue to descend. This is a short experience consisting of one level and honestly not much of an actual game. The objective is to simply catalog and take pictures of all the different fish, and there's no score or any real progression. Kids will love it as will VR newbies, but the neat factor will wear off quickly for most. 
Visuals here are actually not bad at all, coming off like a poor man's ocean descent. Resolution and screen door effect are, of course, very much in your face as an issue, but the fish looked very decent up close and the underwater experience was still fairly convincing as a whole. The house camera, like its Ocean Descent counterpart, has you taking pictures around the house, with one particular photo model taking center stage. In addition to photo taking, there is a side mission that has you in a shooting gallery type situation and literally shooting things out of your camera. Just like the Ocean camera, this game lacks any real depth and as such, most people outside of kids will tire of this after one or two go-arounds. Next up is the Elephant Contraption and its two primary games of Marble Run and Doodle. Another interesting and rather complex build, the Elfin has some neat usages of elastic bands to create a trunk with double articulation. The final step of the build has you placing two Joy-Cons into the trunk and consequently leveraging the Joy-Cons gyros and accelerometers to deliver the effect of 6 degrees of movement, allowing you to actually reach out and around into the game world. With multiple moving parts connected by only elastic bands, again, long-term durability is questionable, with rough usage being a death sentence in short order. The first game on deck is Marble Run, a physics-based puzzler that has you grabbing and placing ramps to guide a falling ball into the hoops below. With multiple levels increasing in complexity, this was actually a pretty fun minigame that reminded me slightly of an extremely simplified version of the old Incredible Machines games. Visuals here are clean and simple, making a nice fit for the Switch's reduced power. Unfortunately, the limitations of the trunk movement could be infuriating as it often made grabbing and positioning of objects a real pain. The second game, Doodle, runs into some of the same movement issues, but to a lesser degree. Doodle is, as the name suggests, an art program similar to Painter VR on the PSVR or Tilt Brush on the PC VR side. Doodle is a very simple yet easy to use program allowing for different brushes, colors and shapes to be used in a forward facing 3D space. Created assets can be grabbed, placed and turned allowing for some truly innovative and imaginative creations. Unfortunately though, creations cannot be saved or shared which is a real missed opportunity as it would have been cool to create things that you could then place into the VR Garage Game Maker. Regardless, visuals here are clean and relatively sharp considering the hardware, and offers a cool experience that will especially be appreciated by those who haven't tried one of the previously mentioned VR art programs. Next up is the combination of two contraptions, the bird and the wind pedal, which are used to various degrees across the game's bird dash, hop dodge, and the super creative title, simply Bird. Easily one of the weirdest contraptions, but also one of the most fun to use is that of the bird contraption. Build time is a recommended 90 to 150 minutes and again features some complexity involving elastic bands and moving parts. As usual, durability is a concern, but less of the actual functionality and more of the flimsy wings that stick out, making it a one-drop and broken affair. The wind pedal contraption is an additional 90 to 150 minutes recommended build time and again features moving parts. Overall durability here is actually pretty decent though, but again adult supervision is recommended to avoid any rough play that might snap the elastic pedal lever mechanism. When looking at the first game aptly titled Bird, we are greeted with easily one of the top games on offer. Delivering some real pilot wing vibes, Bird has you with your face in the butt end of a bird, flying around in a large open world collecting various foods to feed multiple nests of hungry babies that are strewn all over the map. While resolution isn't super sharp and even less so when turning your head quickly, the final experience is still actually pretty awesome and feels very Nintendo in the best possible way. Draw distance is shockingly very decent and the sense of height and flying is fantastic considering the hardware. Control is done by head tracking, while gaining height and speed is done by literally flapping the bird's wings. It's only one level, you can't die and it's very simple, but the experience and the fun factor is there, even if you look like an idiot while playing it. Stepping it up a notch, we jump into Bird Dash and add in the Wind Pedal. This game sees you returning to the same open world of the previous game, but now instead of feeding baby birds, you are racing through rings against a clock. Flapping your wings is still a thing here, but now your bird also has propellers that are controlled by the Wind Pedal to give you an added speed boost. Pumping the pedal picks up the pace, but in a very novel move for increased immersion, the pedal also fans gusts of wind into your face, giving the immediate sense of actually soaring through the sky. Yes, it's gimmicky, but it's good gimmicky. Putting the bird contraption aside, we jump into the game Hop Dodge. Hop Dodge places you in the role of a frog and has you timing jumps over approaching objects. The premise is simple, maybe too simple, but the collection of levels with increasing difficulty gives this a bit of life. Graphics are actually fairly detailed, but again suffer from the same lower resolution and screen door effect as other games. However, here the overall experience, while very shallow, will still have you smiling as a gust of wind hits you every time you jump. I got bored fairly quickly of Hop Dodge, but a younger audience is sure to get a real kick out of it. And finally that brings us to the final big contraption and the definite showpiece of the Labo VR set, 
the Blaster, and its two games Blaster and Coblasta. With a recommended build time of 3 hours, this is easily the most involved build. The Blaster actually shocked me at how functional it was with an actual cocking mechanism that locks in a shot and then releases it with a pull of the trigger and a very satisfying pop. I have real concerns on how long this will hold up to the unavoidable frantic reloading and firing, but in the short term it worked great and was really fun to play with. Now let's take a look at the game Blaster. Over the course of five different levels, this first person wave shooter has you moving down streets and up into the air, taking out an alien invasion. In addition to the reload mechanic, we are also given the ability to flip down a scope-like device on the side of the blaster, with the resulting effect slowing down time, allowing for some more methodical sniping. Again, like the other games, it's not the deepest experience, you can't die and there's no scoring, but it is easily one of the most polished experiences in this collection. Graphics are also a step above the rest, with some additional care and money obviously being spent here. Visuals aren't much sharper, but the overall level detail and lighting is significantly more impressive, reminding me very much of something the PSVR headsets would have seen in the Playroom games. The second of the Blaster games on hand is Coblasta, and delivers a shooting game designed to be passed between two users as they compete for the highest score. In Coblasta, you are feeding hippos from a variety of fruits, all with different attributes and styles. While not on par visually or depth-wise as Blaster, Coblasta is still a fun little game that could make for some fun parent-child gaming moments. Outside of those primary contraptions and games, you can find a lot more to play around with by heading into the VR Plaza. In the VR Plaza, you will find 60 plus minigames offering everything from driving a remote controlled Jeep to playing a simple Mario like platformer. Like the major games, the visuals and quality vary widely, as does the replay value, but these mini, and I stress mini games, are all still fun diversions and serve primarily as some cool proof of concept demos. For those with the desire or creativity, you can also pop the hood on these games and see how they were programmed. This used the Joy-Con VR Garage app, also found in-game, and provides an almost dreams light experience for those who wish to create their own simple VR experiences. This is actually a fairly robust development app which allows for logic control in addition to creating simple visuals. It certainly won't be for everyone, but for those with the patience and the creativity, you will easily find the deepest experience here as it teaches you the basics of video game programming and creation. Currently created games can be saved onto the Switch, but unfortunately they cannot be shared and stands out as a huge missed opportunity. Finally, to top things off, for those looking for something a little less gamey to jump into or show off to friends and family, there is a section of VR videos. These 33 180 degree VR videos feature short live action scenes that vary in quality from the very cool side of things like being face to face with a life sized Mario, diving with penguins and playing on the original Virtual Boy console, to the truly lame and bizarre videos like eating sushi. Visual quality here is again limited by the low resolution screen, but it still is often on par with much of the VR videos you will find on YouTube or other various VR apps. And that brings me to my final review. In 1995, Nintendo was actually the first to bring VR to the mainstream with the introduction of the Virtual Boy. With its red Game Boy type visuals, lack of games, and a high price point, it was dead on arrival. So, it was with a lot of surprise that Nintendo, almost 25 years later, has come back into the VR fold. While the overall quality of the Labo cardboard approach to things being a major drawback, it's hard not to acknowledge that Nintendo has come at VR from such a Nintendo angle. All the games on offer here are simple, visually inferior and kid friendly, but also at the same time made to encourage joy and creativity while also striving to bring families together through video games. Adults and avid gamers will find a lot here to enjoy, but the ultra simple gameplay across all the games will likely ensure not a lot of replay value outside of passing around to friends and family. As a result, I think Nintendo has been very wise to market this primarily to kids, as the simple but approachable VR content is sure to blow their minds and keep them much more enthralled with its little treasures than that of adults. This of course brings up the catch-22 of it all in that building and playing of the Labo VR most definitely should be parent supervised. The cardboard contraptions require patience and a steady hand, ensuring parent supervision and assistance, while the completed contraptions themselves have the inherent quality of being on the fragile side of things, not to mention the $300 switch that's inside the cardboard. And while all this could be a negative, I actually see it as a positive, as this ensures that kids and parents can play and be inspired together. On the VR comfort side of things, Nintendo has also wisely kept this at the forefront, ensuring a solid frame rate, mostly stationary games, and likely intentional short experiences. Of course, it's not without its shortcomings. Visual and durability aside, Nintendo VR really needs a head strap solution. Holding the Labo VR up to your face is one thing when playing these short experiences, but when looking at the upcoming Mario Odyssey VR mode, and more importantly, the entire Zelda Breath of the Wild game in VR, 
I am honestly considering duct taping the switch to my face. And that brings me to my answer of the question I posted at the beginning. Is this gimmick VR that will hurt the perception of where VR is at right now as a whole, or will this instead act as an introduction to what else VR can offer? My bet is on the latter. While lacking cutting edge visuals and game depth, Nintendo has actually done VR justice by still showing how it can be immersive, innovative, accessible, and really, really fun. Labo VR's scattershot approach to VR actually does a lot right here and ends up being the ultimate VR tease. At $80 US, Labo VR ends up being a lot of VR bang for your buck and highly recommended for those with kids. Adults will find a lot to like here too, but the appeal will likely fade fast, as I found myself having little desire to return to most of the content after only a few tries. Regardless of age though, Nintendo's return to VR comes off as a defiant flag in the ground for VR as a mainstay of gaming, and offers up a lot of disposable fun. Emphasis on disposable. Anyways guys, that's it for me. If you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing, and for video updates, hit that bell icon. I'll catch you guys on my next video.